What's up everybody? It's Hunter Oakley here. I'm back with another video. Uh, it's week six of commercial dive school. If you're not familiar with what I'm doing, I'm doing like weekly recaps on how my school up in Seattle, Washington is going at the Divers Institute of Technology. Um, just to keep tabs on myself and uh, let you guys know kind of how it is if you're interested in doing something like this. But um, this week we is the first time we got in the water. Um, well, last week we got in the water just to do like a swim test, but this is the first week of diving and it's been awesome. Uh, it's been everything I've hoped for. Um, so I'm just gonna start off with Monday. Um, it was a little hectic, but our uh, class has got it together pretty good. And uh, we showed up extra early to get all the all the gear ready on the barge and kind of I mean obviously none of us had done it before so we were kind of scrambling not knowing what we were doing but uh, the instructors told us that we did pretty good for uh, for being our first time he's like usually it is a complete mess and uh, the first day because everyone wants to get in the water everyone's all gung-ho and we kept it together so anyways um, the first dive I did, uh, so we had about five dives that day, just four guys in the water each time and then a standby. Um, so I was the, I was on dive four, but the first, um, usually like the class president will come up with, um, who's doing what for the day. And, uh, so the first dive I was doing charts. Um, and that was kind of hectic because a lot of the guys were just gung-ho, wanted to go down or didn't know what to say and everything over comms. So that was kind of a mess and hard for me to do my job because a lot of the guys weren't saying when they left surface, when they reached the bottom, when they left bottom or when they reached surface. So it was kind of like, uh, a little bit of a mess on the first day, but, um, we got it together and then uh, dive fours when I went in, I did a couple other things. I was a tender um, and an extra for one of them. I think I was helping one of the other guys do charts. But um, anyways, I, I dove dive four. Um, I was rocking the Kirby Morgan 37, the stainless, stainless steel version. And um, everything went well. I threw the hat on and it was, it was strange sitting there fully geared up and ready to go <laughs> it was it's a lot different than uh scuba that's for sure anyways um went down there and we had to do two different drills um our first day we had to do our pneumo pedometer drill which is where you shove your pneumo up in your hat which is another lot source of air in case something goes wrong and then we did our bailout procedure um underwater just so we know <laughs> in case <laughs> Uh, anything ever goes wrong we know how to do that <laughs> obviously there seem like two obvious um, things you need to know so kind of the first day I didn't do much I just went to bottom um, sat there stared at my downline looked around it's really murky so there's not really much to look at um, did my both my bailout procedure and my pneumo procedure or pneumo drill and um, then came up and everything was good then day two um same thing i started off with charts was an extra i think i was a tender again and then i was the fourth diver again on day two um we caught we had we had to do a standby procedure so what and so there's two ways to really communicate with topside while you're diving and it's line poles, which goes to your tender or your tender to you. And then there's comms, but sometimes comms are a little spotty. So those are your two main sources of um, finding or communicating with topside. Anyways, we had to do a standby diver procedure. So we would have uh, on each side of the barge, we had a blue and a yellow diver and we would have yellow diver go walk off, wander off somewhere um, underwater and act like he was a down diver. And then blue would have to go find yellow 
And the fastest way to find it, it's so murky that you can't just walk around and try to look for someone. The fastest way to a, a diver that you don't have any idea where is at is come back up to surface, find their downline, or not their downline, their um, umbilical and follow their umbilical because most of the time <laughs> the umbilical is going to lead to the diver. And if the umbilical doesn't lead to the diver, then you're having some serious problems. But um, so we did that, came up, followed my other divers, uh, umbilical, followed him down there, took him back to his downline, gave his tender four pulls, and they both brought him up, and that was the end of the procedure, and vice versa. I went and hid somewhere, he came and found me. That went smooth, and then they also put down um, two tripods with, um, I wanna say one of them was like two inch steel round stock, and the other one's probably one inch, and a hacksaw, and we have, our goal is to uh, get the thinnest coin possible. So you have to cut off the end of the um, round stock as thin as you can, and that's kind of the goal. Um, to be precise and everything and not overwork yourself or not go too crazy and start getting crooked. Um, so we did that just on a, our downtime while we're waiting for the other diver or whatever. Um, so that was good. That was fun. I actually ended up getting this one. It's a little messed up, but it's pretty thin. <laughs> um, so there's that. And then, um, yeah, that's, oh, wow, it was kind of funny. One of the um, divers earlier in the morning lost his ni dive knife, and um, it's really murky. When I say, like, really murky, like, almost can see your feet. Uh, and that's about as far as you, five-foot viz, maybe. <laughs> Anyways, um, so one of the divers lost his um, knife and they're like uh, and it was a black one too so a couple of us have um, yellow ones orange neon green but this guy had a black one and so we're like oh this is probably not gonna get found anyways when I was bringing my standby diver back I was kind of carrying him and he his face was kind of looking at the ground and all of a sudden he since he wasn't actually unconscious obviously he's looking at the ground and all of a sudden he starts to grab something I'm like, what is he doing? And uh, and so I just kind of held him there for a second and he puts his hand up and uh, has the knife in his hand. <laughs> and so we found that, uh, or he found it, but I was carrying him back and I was like, oh, that's funny. Pretty ironic that we did find it in the same day. Um, and then Wednesday we did more of the coin and we did some searching signals so the instructor would throw something off the barge in a random spot and tell the tenders but don't tell the divers and then when we get in the water there's certain line poles that um, instruct you to start your searching signals um, so we would start doing that and then our tender basically had to guide us to where whatever this object was. In our case, it was like a brick tied to a chain and then there was like a little floaty piece of wood on it. And um, it, it was really hard actually, because <laughs> it's like you're down there, you're already kind of confused on which way is what, and then the tender's pulling on you and you're like, okay, I gotta go left this far, back this far, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that was good, that was a good experience and um, really important to know um and then so yeah we did that that was a good dive i don't know most of these dives were around or i could give you the exact um time uh most of them were around 45 minutes or so let's see um Mondays for me was, Monday's dive was 11 minutes. So I just went down there, did my bailout drill, did my pneumo drill and came back up. And then Tuesday's dive was 32 minutes. Um, that was the standby one. 
Then Wednesday's dive was 45 minutes and Thursday's was 49. So I haven't gotten there yet, but um, Thursday we actually, I got there and I was ready to work, whatever, um, and do our thing kind of, everybody has their job on the barge. And generally after you're a diver, you're an extra. So you're kind of just hanging around helping anybody if they, they need a hand. Um, but right as I got there, I'd got there about a half an hour early before school. And some of those guys are showing up an hour, hour and a half early just to set up the barge, which is really awesome. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to try to start showing up more early. Those guys are on it. But um, so I showed up, was ready. We, we um, set up the hats, everything, because there's a pre-dive um, hat check every morning make sure everything's good um, and then we didn't have a standby diver the past th three days we had a standby diver come from another class because none of us were really confident enough to um, be on standby because <laughs> he didn't want to just throw a beginner standby and, and if something went wrong um, us not know what to do and be able to get down to the person anyway so he's like the instructor asked if anyone was confident enough and I was like yeah I'm I feel confident, especially after Monday, it was weird, but, um, Tuesday and Wednesday really boosted my confidence and I feel good in the hat. Um, so he's like, if you, if anyone wants to be a standby diver and doesn't uh, have anything going on right now, cause a couple of the guys already were on their jobs, like being a tender and whatnot. And I was like, I'll be a standby. So, uh, I sat there for the first three dives, um, and every few uh, 15 20 minutes they would say splash standby diver and then i have to get hatted up as fast as i can um and in the water but nothing was going wrong it was just a practice for me which was cool so i just got a little bit more experience it is weird um since it is really cold water you need to wear bigger gloves i mean i'm gonna try next week to play around and use different gloves and just see if using thinner ones will make a big difference but um anyway so i did the standby diver and then i was diving on the fourth dive so i switched over someone else took my spot at standby diver and uh one of the other classmates was like oh i'm gonna bring down my line to practice not tying because we really didn't have a lot going on uh thursday we were just getting familiar and kind of wandering around and um, still cutting the coin. Um, so we did that, we got down there and uh, we were both just trading back and forth the line, practicing our knot tying. And then he, we started cutting the coin and we got a nice thin coin, I think. I don't have anything to prove because we lost it. <laughs> he, we were cutting away or I was cutting away he was cutting away and I saw he was getting low. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna try to get to an angle where I can kind of see if it drops. And he cuts it off and drops. And neither of us moved and we both just leaned down and almost got on our hands and knees. And, and he had a flashlight and we started looking and looking and looking, couldn't find it. So we gave up after like 10 minutes of crawling through the rocks on the ground and we didn't find it. So went back to not tying. And then um, they told us to end up the, or end the dive. So we headed back to our down lines. And then I was like, oh, this is the last dive of the day. We got to clean up our mess. So, because we're not diving on that barge next week. So I asked Topside, I was like, you want us to bring up the uh, workstations, the two tripods with the, um, round stock and the hacksaws and he's like yeah go ahead go back and we'll send you a down line so it was pretty cool me and uh one of the other students we went back grabbed both the tripods carried them to our down lines um, they dropped us an extra down line with a big shackle on it we hooked it up to the um tripod and then gave it four poles which signals um pull it up and so we just gave the line four poles backed up so in case they slipped it didn't drop on our head and we watched it go up and then we went back grabbed the other station 
brought it up. So that was kind of cool to actually feel like we were doing something hands on. And but I know we're gonna get tons of experience doing that, but it was just our first time, so it was cool. Um, but other than that, that was pretty much it this week. We just did a lot of diving, which is awesome. Um, all my gear, everything was good. The hats do, I might try to get a bigger or like a tighter hat liner or do something, maybe put some foam in there or something because it does feel to me like the hat is a little bit clunky around my head. Like I have to sometimes, if I'm looking down, like it slides down on my face. Um, but we'll all get used to it and figure out little, there's little adjustments on the hat and everything that um, make it better for each unique diver. So. The more experience we get, the, the better we will get at that and know our own little techniques and what we like to do. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is our first week diving and our whole class did really good, everyone. There's a few minor problems, but um, that's to be expected. Um, and then, yeah, so that was, that was pretty much it this week. Uh, we have, next week we got a I think we have that knot tying test I was telling you about, and then I don't really know too much what else is going on. So I will get back to you guys next week. Um, I appreciate you guys stopping in and watching the video. Um, so yeah, thanks again, and we will see you next week.